everyone, it's Hannah Schooner or Schooner or Later, and this is my Let's Build a Paladin video. In this video, I'm going to break down all of the choices that you'll have to make when building your paladin, when it comes down to race, where to put your statistics, and what oath to take. As always, I'd like to go into race by prefacing that there is no right race for any class. You can be whatever you want to be. With that being said, every race is naturally good at certain ability scores that can help your character in the abilities and skills that they need to do their best. A paladin is a very versatile class, as you will have melee fighting and spell casting. Because of this, you will want to have strength and constitution as well as charisma for your spell casting abilities. For the melee fighting aspect of the paladin that you're building, it is important that they are strong. Races that have racial bonuses for strength include the Dragonborn, that also has a charisma bonus that could help with your spell casting, the Goliath, that has bonuses for strength and constitution for hit points, and the Half Orc, that also has racial bonuses for strength and constitution. The Dwarf race and any Genasi have constitution racial bonuses that will give you enough hit points to last in battle. Lastly, an Azamar is also a very good choice as they have a racial bonus in Charisma that can help with the spell casting. Azamar paladins are quite common as Azamars believe in the same sort of ideals that a regular paladin would with the fighting against evil and the bringing of justice. Depending on your Dungeon Master's preferred statistic method, whether that is Standard Array, Point Buy, or the Rolling for Stats, you are going to want your Paladin's highest stats to be Strength for melee fighting and Charisma for spellcasting, with Constitution for hit points at a close third. All other ability scores can be wherever you want them to be, depending on how you want role-playing to be for your character. Next. I'm going to break down the choices you have for what oath you want your paladin to take at level 3. The Oath of Conquest is for the paladin that seeks glory in battle and aims to crush their enemies. The spells that come along with the Oath of Conquest are mainly offensive and require saving throws. If you choose this oath, you'll want your charisma to be high enough to have a pretty tough DC for your enemies to have to pass in order for those saving throws to work. The Oath of Redemption is more of a defensive oath. It focuses on non-violent, utility-based solutions and defensive strategies. The spells that come along often have saving throws that are required, so you'll want Charisma to be pretty high in order for your DC to be difficult to pass. An Oath of the Ancients Paladin shares a lot of abilities with the Ranger and the Druid class, combining with nature. This class holds a lot of abilities of restraining enemies to keep them right where you want them in battle. The Oath of the Crown Paladin is for paladins that are really tanky and aim to take attention away from their allies so that they can complete other parts of the mission and the enemy's focus is on you. They are meant to take a lot of damage, including taking damage away from the other party members so that the other party members can focus on the more offensive or other tactics. The Oath of Glory Paladin comes with a lot of spells that aim to buff you and your allies up in combat. One of the only drawbacks of this subclass is that a lot of the spells require concentration, which, if you fail a concentration saving throw, the spell's effects can end, and you can have to make an, a saving throw if you are attacked, take damage, or if you cast another spell that requires concentration, the original spell automatically ends. The Oath of Vengeance Paladin has an ordeal from their past that they are intent on redeeming themselves with. They aim to kill enemies quickly and deal a lot of damage. An Oath of Vengeance Paladin will rarely take defensive tactics or maneuvers. The Oath Breaker Paladin is very difficult to incorporate into a party. However, if you are a dungeon master and you're aiming to write an Oath Breaker Paladin NPC, then this option is great. They deal a lot of damage and they're very tanky. A lot of the effects, however, can make it very hard to work with others. So if you're trying to build a Paladin PC, I would stray away from the Oathbreaker. Along with race, you can choose any background for your Paladin that you feel fits what you're going for. 
However, a lot of paladins choose the acolyte background. They were brought up in a temple, and that is where they learned their oath. And if your paladin chooses to also worship a deity, then being an acolyte means you are a holy warrior, which is what the paladins stand for. Another background that could align with being a paladin is the soldier. Perhaps you are a knight and you're fulfilling your oath by joining adventuring parties and helping those who cannot help themselves. Folk hero is another good background that could work for a paladin. Maybe you came from a small town and a catastrophic event, you proved yourselves as the town's hero. And now you wish to seek something more. Thus, you find an adventuring party to join. Each background has specific personality traits, ideals, flaws, and bonds that go along with that background. Whichever background you choose, go ahead and pick or roll for these things for your character to help you build your backstory. Stereotypically, paladins are lawful good. They have a strict code that usually aligns with the law, and that is where they base their morals around. Now, this does not have to be so. It's just very common that paladins seek to bring justice, and those that seek to destroy must be punished. However, if you wish your paladin to be of a more neutral alignment, this is absolutely allowed. Once you have your subclass, your race, your background, and all of your personality traits, ideals, flaws, and bonds, work towards filling in the blanks on your backstory. If you have the soldier background, why now are you an adventurer? Did your term end or did you leave? Same goes for folk hero. What was the catastrophic event that led you to becoming an adventurer because you were clearly meant for something more? If you're an acolyte, what was the sign that you needed to go on a journey as a holy knight to help others? Let your creative juices flow. And last but certainly not least, picking a name for your paladin. If you already had a name before you started building the character, that's fantastic. If not, there are plenty of fantastic name generators that I will put in the description, whether that is a regular fantasy name generator or a name generator for the specific race that you end up choosing. I hope this was helpful to you for building your paladin. What class would you like to see next? Let me know in the description. And now a special thanks to all of my patrons. Thank you for your support. If you're interested in downloading the one-shots that I write and other exclusive content, it will be available on my Patreon as well as my Ko-fi. See you schooner or later. <laughs> Good night.